Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video I wanted to discuss a relatively new intriguing study in regards to a concept known as the Lagrange points and in regards to the idea behind the size of the solar system. Or basically, how far does the solar system actually extend? Because in this recent study, the two researchers, Edward Bill Bruno and James Green, propose an intriguing gravitational point relatively far from the Sun that can potentially capture a lot of extrasolar objects. Things like, for example, asteroids, possibly things like comets, similar to Oumuamua, or maybe even rogue planets and something beyond that. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the idea behind Lagrange points first. Sometimes also referred to as Lagrangian points or Libration points. And in essence, these are unusual gravitational stability points that can form between two massive bodies. Here's an example of these points formed between the Sun and planet Earth. And so here we have five points where in theory you could actually place some kind of a satellite or some kind of an object and it would possibly orbit in these regions without falling on planet Earth or without falling into the Sun. And that's exactly what we as humans have been doing by launching and placing satellites there and by then using them for various scientific purposes. Now there are no satellites in the L3 point, but there are some in L4 and L5 mostly watching the Sun, there are some in L1 doing the same, but more recently it's actually the L2 point that became extremely popular and very important for science. This is of course the place where the James Webb is located, but also the Gaia telescope and more recently Euclid. This point is approximately 1.5 million kilometers away from planet Earth and by placing a satellite here, it no longer has to deal with the Earth's magnetosphere, which can actually produce a lot of disturbances and a lot of interference with various devices. And you also get a direct line of sight to planet Earth, which means that data transfers become very easy. But the thing is, these are not permanent spots and so at least a little bit of fuel needs to be expanded in order to maintain the orbit for at least a few decades, which is exactly why the James Webb Space Telescope mission is really only going to last approximately 20 years. It's at some point going to run out of fuel. And so in that sense, L1, L2 and L3 points are technically in unstable equilibrium. Things in these orbits will eventually fall out of these orbits and so we're unlikely to find some kind of a prominent asteroid or even some kind of a prominent minor planet orbiting in these locations. But it's the opposite for L4 and L5. These are stable points and so in these positions we do find certain natural satellites, quite a lot of asteroids and for planets like Jupiter quite a lot of minor planets, at least a few thousand but more likely millions or even more. And sometimes we refer to these as Trojans and Greeks, depending on the position. And today we know that quite a lot of planets seem to have these, even smaller planets like Mars. But I guess the question is, why am I talking about the solar system if in the beginning I mentioned that we're going to be talking about much farther distances? Well here it's important to understand that two massive bodies, when one is more massive than the other, tend to produce these Lagrange points that sometimes can capture objects for a very long time. And so it turns out that this can also apply to outside of the solar system. Or at least the location that we thought was outside, but could technically be still considered to be part of the solar system if the study that you can find in the description is actually correct. And so in this recent study, Bill Bruno and Green do a bit of math magic to actually discover that there is something else going on between the solar system, or I guess technically the Sun, and the center of the galaxy. And specifically the galactic center that contains the largest concentration of mass in the Milky Way galaxy. And so here by modeling the Sun and a lot of the surrounding space, they were able to identify points of gravitational balance, or points that I guess are known as Lagrange points for the solar system, but in this case between the Sun and the Milky Way center. And interestingly, it seems to be at approximately 3.81 light years away from the Sun, pointing toward the galactic center. And for this region, there might be at least two points where various objects can enter the unusual orbit around the Sun, to some extent placing them in a very strange elliptical orbit around an imaginary point. And strangely enough, their analysis shows that a lot of these objects could actually remain in these orbits pretty much forever. Unless, of course, something else passed by relatively close to them, disturbing them in the process. 
And so here naturally one example could be stars like Alpha Centauri that's located approximately 4.2 light years away from us. But bizarrely enough, the calculations here show that, in theory, it might become possible to not just capture asteroids and comets, it might also be possible to capture rogue planets. In other words, there might be a bunch of rogue planets orbiting in this region, and in theory they could have stayed here for billions of years. And in the process they would also obviously disturb a lot of other objects, such as various comets or various asteroids, which would then, over time, move closer to the inner solar system, passing through it, or maybe even colliding with something else. Now, in some sense, it might explain the existence of Oumuamua and the comet Borisov, discovered a few years back, although because they didn't really come from this particular location, it might be kind of difficult to prove. But I guess more importantly, it technically means that if there are some planets or some objects orbiting here, and if to some extent this is basically a type of a Lagrange point, it would mean that the size of the solar system is actually much larger, at least 3.81 light years in terms of radius. Because in some sense, here we're talking about a capture of various objects by the solar system itself. And since here we're talking about a relatively prominent capture, it would definitely expand the solar system by at least four times. But just to clarify, here we're only talking about a relatively small opening, somewhere inside the heliosphere produced by the Sun, that seems to exist toward the galactic center and also away from it. And so here we're talking about the equivalent of L1 and L2 points. And the other somewhat strange discovery here is basically the orbits produced by these objects. If they're real, they would produce unusual fractal patterns that would resemble unusual shapes if seen from planet Earth moving around in strange elliptical shapes, but basically taking billions of years to possibly complete. And naturally, if any of this is real, in theory we should be able to see these objects with the upcoming Vera Rubin Observatory. It's going to become operational in 2025, and so maybe in the next few years something here might be discovered after all. But in reality, discovering a rogue planet here is extremely unlikely, and the reasoning behind this is really simple. If these points are real and if capturing a permanent object here is relatively common, we would most likely expect at least one brown dwarf and at least one star to be captured here as well. And we know that there are no stars here and no brown dwarfs at these close distances have ever been discovered. Which means that this is still a hypothesis. But this gravitational point is most likely real, it just we don't really know if the orbits here are permanent. For all we know, maybe a lot of stars actually compete with each other, shifting this point all over the place, and so in that sense maybe this is not a Lagrange point and instead represents an entirely different phenomenon. Nevertheless, still a really cool study and a really cool discovery, and if confirmed, is going to redefine the total size of the solar system. But once there are some updates, or once something here is actually discovered, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining your channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.